Okay, here are six of these organically raised eggs using the Kerrygold unsalted butter. And I'm gonna see how this goes today. So this morning, I weighed in at 151.2 pounds and my uh, waistline is roughly get about 35. So 35 um, is basically where my waistline is at this time. You can see I've got a decent amount of body fat uh, left on me still right here around the stomach but otherwise I'm relatively lean throughout the rest of my body. Um, I'm not expecting to either gain or lose weight per se in this diet. Uh, I'm not even trying to maintain it necessarily. I think as long as I'm in the 150 pound range, that's good enough for me because I'm no athlete. So uh, we're going to give this uh, a try for a month and I'm going to basically do the same thing on the last day of this 30 day carnivore challenge. And we're going to see if any of this fat goes away or maybe I've gained fat. I don't really know how this is going to work out. Hopefully my lean mass will go up and my uh, body fat will go down a little bit, but I'm not trying to necessarily gain the system here. I'm, I'm trying to mainly focus on the carnivore diet as it is and uh, just see how my life either improves or doesn't improve or just see how the experience is. So now let me talk about the rules of engagement for this 30-day challenge that I'm uh, embarking starting today. First, I'm going to talk about drinks, and then I'm going to get to the foods that, I'll, that I'm going to be eating. Then I'll explain what I'm not focusing on. So first of all, I'll be drinking mostly water or snake juice with a teaspoon of uh, stevia added to you know the two-liter uh, drink mix, and then I shake it and pour some into a cup. I may occasionally drink in the morning like a Monster Energy Ultra Zero or something like that, and I have uh, three more of these packets left of uh, emergency that I'm just going to try to use up. But once I've used the last ones up by, I think, Friday or so, I'm basically done with any drinks. Pretty much the rest of my drinks are all going to be zero carb, zero calorie drinks, almost exclusively water and uh, snake juice, which is just slightly salty water with a tiny bit of stevia added to it. And if I go anywhere on weeknights or on the weekend uh, with... Um, you know, I'm going to be taking a blender bottle uh, with me, you know, leave it in the car or whatever and just drink when I'm thirsty. Um, if I'm in a restaurant, I'll try to drink water, you know, uh, instead of like a soda or something else there. So uh, I'm also going to be avoiding milk. Um, I just haven't had any interest in drinking milk, chocolate milk or anything milk based, you know, in years. And I'm also not going to be drinking alcohol because I rarely drink I only drink in social occasions and my goal here is to really try to succeed and possibly thrive on this carnivore diet so I'm mostly going to be drinking water. Now let's talk about the food. Now obviously I'm going to be focusing on purely animal products uh, or uh, foods that are made within the animal kingdom basically so dairy and butter you know may be a part you know as well as cheese of some of the foods that I eat. And again, I may make exceptions on social occasions, like eating out with coworkers during the week or if I go out to a dinner or a party, but I'm gonna try like heck um, to avoid anything less than a pure carnivore meal throughout the 30 day challenge. Or, you know, if I, if I don't challenge myself, what kind of challenge is this? So I'm gonna try to live with the consequence of this choice for the next 30 days and uh, and we'll see how things go. It's possible that if I order a steak, it may be prepared with like canola oil or margarine or something like that. Um, but I'm going to try to keep that possibility down to a minimum, if, if at all possible. And I can always just skip eating altogether if I go to these sort of social occasions or parties, etc. I will eat meat that has seasoning on it, but I, I've never really needed a lot of seasoning anyways, and I haven't used barbecue sauce in months. But I'm not averse to spices or seasoning. Um, sometimes my wife buys something pre-seasoned and sometimes her and my oldest daughter like to add a little bit on top of meals that they prepare. And I'm just not going to worry about that in general. Uh, or if I buy these hot wings, you know, they have a little bit of this um, stuff on top of it. And I'm not really allergic to anything, so I don't really have any gut issues per se. I'm only worried about constipation or straining during, mal during bowel movements 
you know, in the month or so after my surgery. So I'm going to try to lay off the dairy products, but I'm not promising anything. I'm going to try to lay off um, anything other than pure carnivore foods. But again, I'm not promising anything, but I do want to do my best. And we're just going to see how that goes. Also, I won't be focusing on fasting or time-restricted feeding per se, though I'm normally comfortable with eating just two meals a day, you know, a, a good lunch and a good dinner for the sake of convenience. Um, you know, I'm somewhat lazy in that, in that aspect, but I like to think of it as being efficient. But uh, I do intend to also count calories every day. However, I want to make it clear that um, this is mostly for me because I like to see, you know, how much I've eaten over time. I've been relatively good since uh, Halloween of 2010 and counting calories. And I just like to see essentially, you know, the calories that come in from the fuel that I consume and then how my body adapts to it. I'm not a, a fierce calorie in, calories out guy. I've never been one of those, but I've always believed that calories count to some extent, even though different micronutrients, you know, are effect, uh, have different responses in, in the body with regard to hormones and things that nature. So I'm going to basically try to keep focusing on counting calories just simply because it's such an easy thing for me to do. Oh, I'm only eating one meal. This is approximately this many calories. And I put it in, in my little uh, notebook, my little document. And uh, it's just something I do. And, but it's not something I, I agonize over. And it's just something that's just part of rote memorization for me at this point. But sometime towards the end or at the end of this, uh, I will list all the calories totals for each and every day just so you can sort of see how things are going so calories will be a part of some of these videos but they are not required and I don't use them to base what I'm eating I don't say oh I've had a 600 calorie meal therefore my next meal has to be 1200 calories or whatever I just take that okay this meal was 600 calories or whatever that's good to know and then that's it so just want to let you uh, know how that goes but I will also post my weight on the morning of January 31st so you can see where I end up, and I'll also do a similar, um, you know, shirtless uh, video, so you can see if if anything has changed. Again, I'm not really predicting anything, but uh, I, I think it's fair to show you what what happens. So uh, next up will be what I eat for dinner. Here are some beef chuck Texas style boneless ribs that I'll be eating tonight. They have been prepared medium well. And there's uh, some slight sauce on it that my wife put on it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wipe this out uh, right now. Okay, I talked with my wife and uh, she corrected me. Basically, we put no um, sauce. She put no sauce on it. All this is just a natural moisture that came off it from being cooked in the oven for 20-30 minutes, however long it was. Now a handful of seasoning she put on it, so I'm just going to show you what she put. She put onion powder and just a little bit of garlic salt and then a little bit of uh, Montreal steak uh, powder. I forget what it's called. It's just McCormick's Grill Maker or Grill Mates, so some sort of thing. So that's all the seasoning that she put on this. And it's it's fine. I don't really care that if there's a little bit of sink, uh, seasoning sprinkled in, but that's what I'm gonna consume. And you can see it is well done. Very slightly pink uh, on one side, and this is just about as well cooked as I like it. I'm a fan of medium well done. I went back for seconds, and I decided I would get one more of these. And uh, since I have room, and I'm not necessarily hungry per se. I'm not uh, also f very full, so I figure I'll try to take advantage and get one more of these uh, in me. Okay, that's going to do it uh, for this first day of eating on this carnivore 30-day challenge. Um, one point of interest, uh, I barely finished that last bit of boneless ribs. Um, I was pretty stuffed at that point. And uh, on, on the aside, I, I'm taking note of really just how chewy that uh, particular meal was, and I'm gonna deprioritize it a little bit in my future list of foods to consume. It just took too long to, to chew at it, for, you know, like 40 plus minutes for the three pieces of meat, basically, when usually with like a similar amount of egg, I can scarf that down, you know, five, 10 minutes. So, uh, and of course, I just had to brush my teeth and it's just a lot to pick through. So it's just something to keep in mind. Some, uh, 
meals, some meats are easier to actually chew on and potentially digest than others. So uh, that's kind of interesting. So, I mean, I still love steaks, but that particular type of steak, maybe just a little bit too chewy for me. So I'm gonna <clears throat> put things like eggs up towards the top of my list of meats that I like to consume, alongside things like you know hot wings and certain types of drumsticks and chicken wings and stuff like that. And so <clears throat> over time, I'll develop a list of foods that I prefer and a list of other prefer, uh, uh, foods that I prefer less. And I'm gonna try to focus on foods that I enjoy more on this way of eating to help promote me continuing to do this. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.